Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes are advancing to the Sweet 16 to take on Colorado. Wasn't pretty against West Virginia, but they got the W. That's what matters. Clark put up 32 points, and her Hawkeyes feeling pretty good after not even having their A game and still coming away victorious. Time now to welcome in CBS Sports College basketball analyst Tarika Foster Brasby to discuss Iowa's chaotic win over eight seed West Virginia. And Tarika, when you look at the way Kaitlin and his team won, how much more satisfying is it the fact that they're able to get it done when they didn't have their best shooting? That's actually very satisfying, uh, especially the way that this West Virginia team really ramped up their defensive presence. Um, I think Iowa felt like they needed to rise to the occasion, and they also stepped up their defensive intensity, and I think that is kind of what made this a little bit more refreshing for this Iowa team, just that they really proved to themselves that they could continue to play basketball, even if it was just a bit out of character for them. They were not getting great shooting efforts from anyone early on. This Mountaineers team really provided that defensive energy um, and made it very difficult for Caitlin Clark um, and company. But once she got going, she definitely got going. And it was important to get Hannah Stalky involved as well too. She had a double-double on the night. I think that this is the kind of momentum that you wanna ride as you go through this tournament, because it's only gonna get harder from here. And speaking of it only getting harder, they have to face Colorado, a team they beat in the Sweet 16 last year. What are you yeah. most excited for for that matchup? Well, I like the fact that this Colorado team is a very balanced team um, offensively. Um, between Jalen Sherrod and Aaronette Vonley, Vonley is who really leads the way for this Buffalo team. She's an excellent scorer, six foot three center. She has a strong interior presence. She doesn't shoot many threes, but she's extremely efficient. Um, and she can really control the paint. She can really own the glass. And so all, all season long, I wanted to talk about how much it was going to be important for Caitlin Clark to really have somebody who can be inside and really be consistent. She had Monica Zazano for that last season. This year, it's got to be Hannah Stalky. She hasn't been as consistent as we like to see, but when she's going, she gets going, and she's incredible. And so I think this is a great opportunity for her, but don't sleep on Colorado, right? Because this Colorado team had some really great wins this year. They got a, a win over over LSU when they were number one. They got a win over USC, who we just saw play an incredible game against Kansas. They've got a win over Kansas State, over Stanford. So Colorado is very capable of getting a W against Iowa. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to South, uh, Southern California in a bit, but let's talk mm -hmm. about another SC team. That is number one and undefeated South Carolina taking on number four Indiana after they took down Oklahoma in their round of 32 matchup. What really sticks out to you about this game? Because the way South Carolina is playing so far, Tarika, they look unbeatable. They do. They look so invincible. But we know last season we said the same thing, that this South Carolina team was an invincible team, and they they ended up losing in the Final Four to Iowa. So I think it's going to be important for them to just to maintain that energy. They rolled in their first two rounds, averaging about 50 points of uh, wins between both opponents. And I like this matchup for Indiana because I think this is going to give Indiana a, an, a real opportunity to just kind of measure where they are and see how strongly they can be offensively. We know Mackenzie Holmes. She's incredible. She's a trend. She's a traditional style post player, but she's going to have to bring her a game against Camilla Cordor. So that's six, seven worth of grown woman that is down there that is going to challenge her in the paint. So the question that I have is can this Hoosier team offensively keep up with the Gamecocks and I'm not quite sure that they can outside of homes. They have senior guard Sarah Scalia who definitely can provide some offensive energy but South Carolina got multiple players that can score. They've got multiple players that average over nine points a game. They shoot the three ball the second best in the country. Like this is going to be a challenge for Indiana who doesn't always play the same way on the road that they play in Assembly Hall. So it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out. Yeah they also have incredible depth right. You bring the bench in and it's like nothing. They don't miss a beat, especially with nothing Malaysia changes. for Wiley. Yep. Exactly. Now, <laughs> you talked about USC and their effort against Kansas. Got close. Got a little scary there in the second half. One-point game. And then they rallied and made sure they didn't crumble down the stretch. Juju Watkins, Tarika, had 28, 11, and 5. What impressed you the most about her performance in her second game 
in the NCAA tournament. Everything about this, this young lady just impresses me because when I was 18 years old, I wasn't doing this. I was making tons of mistakes. This girl is so poised. She's so gathered. And I love this for her. And one thing that she said in her post game uh, interview is that, you know, it takes a lot of people to make this kind of thing happen. And she feels like they have the right pieces at USC right now in order to move forward. They're going to the Sweet 16. And she's right. As incredible as Juju Watkins is, it is truly being shown to everyone that it's a team effort. Mackenzie Forbes is doing a great job stepping up as real. Rhea Marshall is a defensive juggernaut. She's doing a great job as well. And they've got graduate transfers from Ivy League. Ivy League programs have not been getting the shine that they deserve. But I'm telling you, these girls are coming here and they know how to ball. And that nucleus has gelled together really well to really support Juju and helping to assist her to complete the kind of games and the kind of performances that she's doing. So when you add that talent, to a talented core that can support you, you got a scary squad on your hand. And I think Lindsey Gottlieb has something special right now. And we get to see more of it because Juju's just a freshman, Chris. We get more of this. You know, they talk about how Juju on that beat. No, Juju <laughs> is the beat in everything. Yes. <laughs> like she is box office. She commands so much attention on that offensive floor. Now, they have to still get past Baylor who we saw what they did against Virginia Tech. Jada Walker went off. Yes. What excites you the most? What are you looking forward to most about that matchup? Well, I want to continue to see this team play outside. I want to see them shoot the ball. I want to see them continue to toss it up because I think that's what's going to help them. I still believe that defensively this USC team is way more solid and a bit more sound, and that is what's going to work in their favor. But I want to see this Baylor team continue to shoot. I want to see this Baylor team go off. And make USC work for it a little bit more. I feel like this was a great matchup. We got to see some adjustments from USC because as you mentioned in this matchup tonight, they were very close, but it took Lindsey Golly of getting together and saying, hey, we're going to make some adjustments off the zone. We're going to switch Juju out a bit. And she was able to work with those adjustments. I want to see her continue to do that, to mature in game, to see how she's able to make adjustments on the fly when necessary. I think Baylor will present them an opportunity to challenge there. Yeah, there are not going to be any easy games in this Sweet 16. Yeah. And another one, Duke, UConn, after Paige Beckers played one of the best games of her life, 32 yeah. against Syracuse in the round of 32. What are you expecting from Duke and UConn? Because you know Duke's going to bring it on the defensive end. Yeah, buddy, Duke is definitely going to bring it. I think they're one of the hottest teams in this in this tournament right now. And that's a little bit of history uh, between Duke and 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 UConn um, matching up in in the in the NCAA tournament. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see these two teams together. But I think that Paige Beckers right now has this team rolling. And one thing about Duke that I can say that I've loved to see over the last couple of games from them in this tournament is that their ability to stay poised and remain calm when they were playing in the round of 32 they started off that matchup with 11 straight minutes of non baskets being made it was the most uh, interesting thing that I could ever imagine and they ended up coming back for the win so that shows me this team has poised this team knows how to defensively uh, to, knows how to defend um, Kara Lawson really has them playing uh, above what I think most people assume that they could, could continue to still be here in this in this NCAA tournament but I think UConn I've said it the entire se uh, entire season they're, they're showing a different side of them which is weird because it's UConn right you expect this program to automatically be jailed, to automatically be ready, but they've had to face a little adversity. And for Paige Beckers, who literally this time last season wasn't playing because of an injury, she honestly feels like this is a redemption season for her, and she's playing like it. That's going to be hard for the Blue Devils to overcome. It's going to be hard, but guess what? We will be entertained for <laughs> sure through all of these games. Tarika Foster Brasby, thanks so much, girl. Thanks. All right, now let's look at the odds to win the national title. And South Carolina, unsurprisingly, the favorites at minus 160. And then Iowa is at plus 750. LSU, a little bit further behind at plus 800. UConn, plus 1400. Then Stanford and Texas. Can't wait to see who's going to be cutting down the nets in Cleveland.